Around October 2020, HashiCorp released a new big thing that is supposed to rule the world. And that big thing is called Waypoint. So what is it? It's a strange tool, even though it's not so to, supposed to be strange. It's supposed to uh, be in charge of all the tasks related to building, deploying, and releasing applications. It is probably aimed at developers. We're going to discuss that a bit later. But anyways, we have a tool that unifies that part of the process, the part of the process that builds, deploys, and releases something. It is suspiciously missing testing, as if there is no testing in between building and deploying, but maybe after deploying. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, let's take a look at Waypoint uh, in 20 minutes or less. You are watching, uh, what are you watching? Yes, you are watching the DevOps Toolkit series channel. Please subscribe. Subscribe uh, if you would like to see notifications. And we are going right now to explore Waypoint in 20 minutes or less. I have a Kubernetes cluster up and running. Now, before we, to be more precise, actually, I have Docker desktop up and running. Uh, but before we see how it works over there, let me stress that Waypoint is not limited to Kubernetes. It can work in ECS, ECR, uh, ACI, uh, Nomad, many, many different platforms. EC2, uh, in plethora of platforms. But today, for the sake of argument, I will use uh, Kubernetes, local Kubernetes with Docker desktop. And uh, you need to understand that more or less everything works the same no matter where it's deployed. And that, as we will discuss later, might be the biggest strength, but also the biggest weakness of Waypoint. We'll get to that. Anyway, let's uh, first install Waypoint. Waypoint install uh, platform is going to be Kubernetes and I'm going to accept uh, accept terms of service so that it doesn't ask me questions. It will take a moment or two until it is all set up. It shouldn't take long. Hopefully, there we go. We have Waypoint installed. So what you should understand now is that for Way, Waypoint is not client only. Uh, you, we need to have a server running inside the, the cluster. Uh, and that server is, the UI of that server is accessible uh, through this address. We, we might see it later. Uh, for now, that's not really what matters. What matters is that I'm going to go to repository of one of my applications and we're going to see how I might or might not benefit from Waypoint. So uh, I'm going to the DevOps Toolkit uh, application and uh, there is a single file that we need to have, uh, which is similar to like Terraform files in more ways than one. So Waypoint HCL. And this defines everything I need for building, deploying, and releasing my application, this specific application. There is a project, a DevOps Toolkit, that's not really important. There is only one application. There could be multiple applications here. Some labels, that really does not matter. What does matter is the build section. And build, in this case, says use Docker. Now, at this very moment, today, that might change in the future. It could be Docker or it could be Buildbox. Now, I think that Buildbox are too much magic for me. I'm not very fond of it. And uh, when working with Kubernetes, I assume that everybody has a Docker file. So I will be using Docker today. Um, for some other cases, you might want to go with Buildbox. Anyways, what is interesting here in this combination, at least, is that there is a hook which will be executed uh, before the build starts. And the command that will be executed is make build. Now I have a make file for this application, so I have in it a target build, which will build the artifacts and do whatever needs to be done 
before building a container image, in this case, using Docker. We also have, uh, I also have a registry that will use Docker uh, and it will create an image called DevOps Toolkit. The tag will be dev and it will be local, right? It could be remote. It could be Google Container Registry or Amazon Container Registry or Azure Container Registry or Docker Hub. It could be many different places. But as I will argue later, this is mostly for local development. So local, why not? Um, and then we have deployment. The second phase is deploy. Uh, which will use Kubernetes. So I will be deploying to Kubernetes and then, as I mentioned before, it could be deployed to other places like EC2 in AWS or uh, Google Container Run or ECS in AWS and so on and so forth. Pro part is used for health checks and service port is 80. That's the port uh, that uh, should be exposed at least internally. And the last one is release. And this is kind of a strange one on a first look. Um, release is separated from deployment and what really it means in waypoint terms is that first it deploys something and then it releases it and in this specific context release man means mostly available to the public right um, if it needs to create a load balancer if it needs to expose some ports open some firewalls and so on and so forth so whatever needs to be done to make an application available after deploying it. From Kubernetes perspective, that's kind of very strange because all those things are defined as uh, metadata for deployments, but hey, this is multi-platform, so. Anyways, it will use also Kubernetes. It will, uh, in this case, publish a node port 30,000 and internally it will use port 80. So this is relatively straightforward, relatively simple or it might not be. I still need to think about whether it's really simple. Anyways, that's the definition. Now, the first thing we need to do is to waypoint to initialize and with the command waypoint init. This is one time deal for an application. Uh, and now it's initialized. It's similar to Terraform init, right? And then we do waypoint up. And this will do what needs to be done. This part here is actually, this is the hook. This is the command that was executed, the command I specified to be executed before building the image. And then it is building container image using Docker file in this case, it could be build packs. It, it just finished deploying and then releasing, making it available. And it says, hey, this is the deployment URL and this is the release URL. Now. When this is a public service like uh, Google, uh, Google or Azure or Amazon, AWS actually, this should work. But in this specific case, this address will not work. Um, actually, let me show you. If I copy the address, um, what should happen if I uh, open a browser? This is what is supposed to happen. This is the address that we are supposed to get. And actually, hey, it works. Look at that. I had no idea because it didn't work last time I checked. It's a bit shaky. Anyway, today it works, yesterday it didn't. And that's one of the downsides that we will discuss of Waypoint. It is still very, very early. Anyways, it gave me the address and through that address I can access my application. Uh, and it is randomly generated, more or less randomly generated address on waypoint.run domain. So waypoint itself, the service is exposing dynamically um, uh, domain to my cluster or subdomain, sub sub subdomain. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. Uh, now uh, let's see what happens if we modify the application. So I'm going to uh, what am I going to do? Config.tomo. This is a simple um, Hugo application. Nothing really special, as simple as it can get. And I'm going to change here the title to say uh, DevOps Toolkit Series with Waypoint and then maybe three exclamation marks, right? And we want to deploy a new release, so Waypoint up. And if I go back to Terminal, 
uh, we can see here that it is saying Deox Toolkit series with waypoint. And if I refresh, still nothing. And if I refresh, still nothing. Because the waypoint is still working on it. Working, working. Yeah, it didn't finish. Come on. Okay, now it should be available. And we can see. Huh. Yes, there we, this is one of the things that I actually really dislike with Waypoint. Every time we deploy something, we get a new address, a completely new address. So I need to copy this address. I cannot just refresh the screen. I need to copy this address. And then, there we go, with three exclamation marks or four or whatever the number of exclamation marks is. Now it worked. So every time we change something, we need to redeploy and we get a new address. And those are the two very annoying things, to be honest. To begin with, uh, I've, it would be nice to use the same address always. Now, that makes me believe why would Hash even expose that address? I can do localhost uh, 30,000, I think. And uh, it's always the same address. Like, why would they get a dynamic address, at least in the context of local development, if I can use localhost and then it's always the same address? Always, always, always the same address. The second thing that is kind of bummer, and I think is a missing piece, is it is really kind of a waste of time to uh, do waypoint up, waypoint up, waypoint up every few minutes. It would be nice if it would monitor my files and rerun uh, that command internally every time. So I would like dynamic compilation and then that process simply running in the background all the time. This is a waste of time, me always getting a new address and then realizing that, it, that I'm better off uh, going through localhost and uh, having to rerun the command every time. It's just not very productive compared to some other tools that we have. Anyways, enough of saying bad things about Waypoint. Let's see Waypoint logs. Uh, and we can see the logs of my application. It just, it's equivalent to, in this context to Docker, uh, Docker logs, basically. Now, let's see what did we get deployed. QCuttle get pods. And we have a potential problem here. I deployed my application a couple of times and I would expect that actually every time I redeploy the application it would overwrite the previous release but it keeps all the releases over there. I'm not sure whether it's a bug or not but I definitely don't want to have multiple versions of my application while developing it, just wasting CPU and memory for no good reason. This is kind of bad. It should be only one of them, the, the one that in this case was created 54 seconds ago. But for some strange reason, it maintains the previous one as well, which is kind of silly and a waste of uh, waste of time. Now, so that's all there is. They point up to build and uh, deploy the application, and uh, there is uh, yeah, there is there is a UI UI and uh, authenticate. And we can see the UI here. Um, it's really pretty basic and nothing really special. I can see my application, my logs. Okay, I can understand how this might be interesting for people who uh, don't like terminals. They can see the information here, whatever that information is. Still, nothing really special. Uh, documentation, invite, invite. Is this is nice. It's really nice to be able to invite a colleague, let's say, uh, to collaborate with me. And I get this link, and then I would send this link to that to a friend of mine, to a colleague, to let's say review what I did. But it's not that easy, it's not that good. Uh, I need to redeem the invite, that's okay, but then everybody, whomever wants to work with me, needs to install the CLI. And the reason why I'm kind of negative for that to, towards that is that today there are many other solutions that allow teams to collaborate just by opening a browser because everything is online, everything is in cloud, everything is accessible all around. And I don't think it makes sense for 
people who want to review to install uh, anything but hey uh, if that's not a problem for you you can invite colleagues to collaborate on whatever you deployed nice and finally the last thing is uh, we can destroy once we're finished waypoint destroy and it's good that you saw this because it's hard to explain how buggy this is. Uh, there are errors popping up all the time and you just witnessed one of those. Um, it doesn't know what to do. Anyways, that's a very short demo, very, very short demo. It's simply because Waypoint is not doing much. It builds, deploys, releases, whatever the release means. Um, and the real strength is that it can do that on many, many different platforms. But let's close, close the terminal session and then discuss really Waypoint and whether it makes or it doesn't make sense to use it. Let's go to the front screen. There is one extremely important thing that I did not show you in that demo, but you need to trust me, is that when we deploy things with Waypoint, in this case, to Kubernetes, it creates a deployment and it creates a service. And that is about it. And that is very problematic because uh, any serious application running in Kubernetes needs much more. It needs the ingress controller, it might need, uh, it might not be a deployment, it might be a stateful set, it might be uh, f using Flagger or Knative, it might have Istio, and so on and so forth. Almost I don't recall the last time I saw an application Kubernetes that is as simple as, uh, an as being an entity that has only a deployment and exclusively a deployment as a service, not even Ingress. And I don't think I ever saw such a situation. Now you might say, hey, uh, for development environment, I might not need those things. And you might be right. But in that case, that means that Waypoint might have a good use case only and exclusively for development environments, potentially only for local environments, at least when Kubernetes is concerned. Uh, but even that does not make sense because if I have an application that is running in Kubernetes uh, and uh, ultimately it should be running in production, I almost certainly have my YAML files or Helm chart or uh, customized files. I have the definitions uh, somewhere of that application and those definitions are used to deploy it to production, to staging and what's or not. So why wouldn't I use that? Why would Waypoint app be any simpler than... Uh, actually, it is simpler because with Waypoint app, I have one command while without it, I have uh, Docker, con Docker image build and kubectl apply or helm install or customize whatever, right? So it's reducing from one from two commands to one command, assuming that I don't know how to create a script. But at the expense of uh, preventing me from running in my local development something that is very similar to what is running in production. Um, and the reason why it's preventing me from doing that because there is no plugin for Helm, there is no plugin for Customize, there is even the plugin for Kubernetes does not allow me to use my definitions. It forces me to use whatever Waypoint creates. So uh, it might be useful in the context of Kubernetes only in the development environment and even then it would be very risky because it doesn't allow us to use our own definitions, which we almost certainly have. Now, what are the advantages of Waypoint? The advantage, like similar to Terraform, it supports almost everything that matters. It can run in EC2, in ECS, in uh, both from AWS, in Azure Container Instances, in Docker, in uh, Google Container Run, in Kubernetes, in Netflix, Netlify, in Nomad, maybe a few others, and it can be extended to many, many more. So that's the advantage, which 
I'm not sure whether it is fulfilled because really for my application, I, I, I don't care that my application can run in all those places. I care that it runs in one, maybe two. That leads us to, that leads me to think that for Kubernetes, this does not make almost any sense. For ACI, yes, but ACI, Azure Container Instance, is hopefully nobody uses in production. For EC2, again, even EC2 is not used only like this. What it might make sense is ECS, Netlify, uh, GCR, single container situations uh, or serverless situations might make sense. But for Kubernetes and many, and basically any more complex situation, which is, means any application it is not very simple hobby type of application or mom and pop shop. Hmm, no, nah, no. Nah. Now, still, there is the pros, the advantages that it, runs, it can deploy to many different places. Uh, the disadvantages, first, Kubernetes plugin is pointless. It's really, without support for Helm, uh, YAML customized, it is pointless. So don't, don't even think about it. The assumption that development should not use the definitions that are the same or similar to what is deployed to staging and production is just silly. Uh, the assumption that every application is a Kubernetes deployment and a Kubernetes service and nothing else is also silly. Waypoint up command uh, leaves the previous version. I have double uh, double everything. Uh, that's that's also kind of silly. Then it uses HCL. I understand that Terraform uses HCL because it's a tool that was created a long time ago. But today, I don't want to work with HCL. I mean, YAML is uh, everywhere. Why not YAML? Why HCL? And I know that now some people will start throwing stones at me and saying HCL is amazing, it's it's awesome and all those things. No, no, it's not. No, no. I mean, it is not. It is just the ugly version of YAML. Uh, it is always giving me a new endpoint, so I cannot just keep it in browser and refresh. I need to always copy the output from Waypoint up uh, and then paste it in my browser. That's also silly. Um, and if we, if, if Waypoint ever starts supporting uh, YAML, Kubernetes YAML and then the native formats for deploying applications, which it must, then having the release uh, stage or command is, is also silly because that's all part of deployment. And uh, finally, the last beef I have with Waypoint is that it forces me to install a server. Do I really want to have a server only so that I can do something that is equivalent to kubectl apply or uh, gcloud this or aws that? Uh, it is replacing, it is a wrapper around simple commands. And for that, I definitely don't see the significant advantage of using the server, especially since we are talking about development environment and something that under no condition should be used in production. Uh, to conclude, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, it, I, I might be the only person on planet that is not impressed with Waypoint. Uh, I don't see many reasons to use it. Now, HashiCorp is known to create great tools that uh, are not so great at the beginning, but become great a year later, right? That's what happened more or less with Terraform. So we might want to wait for half a year more and see where this is going, but not today. I, I honestly cannot recommend this to anybody, even though Hashi is, is one of the, my favorite companies. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, click the thumbs up button please 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 uh, and subscribe to the channel and if you would like to support uh, this channel uh, with uh, uh, please consider getting one of the books and the courses and finally hey uh, listen to the podcast uh, and the live streams on, on on a different channel there is DevOps, devops paradox channel where we do live streams and there is a podcast go and listen to it and oh one more time thumbs up and like it Immediately. You need to do that immediately. Thumbs up. Like it. Thank you for watching. Cheers.